What is up guys, Eric here, Team Eccentric. This is the first dual video we'll be posting. Uh, it is Connor versus myself, him on the left with the Ash Blossom mat, me obviously with the with the Mermail mat. Connor is playing Raid Raptors and obviously I'm playing Waters. So Connor's starting. He's starting off with the Vanishing Lanius, which allows him to special summon the Tribute Lanius. He then activates Raid Raptors Nest, which allows him a search. Raid Raptors are a very interesting deck, especially right now. Um, considering that the Simorg got banned and there's a bunch of other cards that got hit. I mean, that, this this is basically the Winged Beast deck to play right now. So he adds the Pain Lanius. He uses the Pain Lanius in hand and he, pay, he, pay, he takes 400 damage, targets the Tribute Lanius and special summons it, and I believe it becomes the same level. Um, and then he uses the Tribute Lanius effect and sends the Mimicry Lanius. Uh, I know the glare is pretty bad on the graveyard guys, um, but the Mimicry Lanius is sent to the graveyard because essentially um, he can banish it and add another uh, Raid Raptor monster from his deck to his hand, if I'm not mistaken. And he adds the Raider's Wing, I believe. Um, Raider's Wing is a very interesting card because it uh, kind of ties both Phantom Knights and Raid Raptors together into um, you know splashable archetypes, which you know, they've always kind of been very similar in a lot of ways. So, um, so then he, yep, so the Pain Lanius did become a level 4. He Link summons into the uh, Y Strix, Y Strix being the Raid Raptor Link monster, which allows him to special summon a level 4 uh, Winged Beast, Dark Winged Beast specifically, I believe, from his deck. So he does, in fact, summon the Zephyros. Uh, the reason, obviously, as you can see, you can see the line of play that he's going down here. Obviously, overlay, detach the Zephyros. Um, bounce, bounce the nest, um, spec back the Zephyros, and do do uh, you know a lot of extension. So he overlays the Tribute Lanius and the Zephyros, and I, obviously he makes the uh, Four Strix. He detaches from the Four Strix, which immediately allows him to set a rank up spell straight from his deck, which is pretty ridiculous because uh, given he has a well, so he gets the search first. But um, given he um, has a rank 4 in his graveyard, which he generally will end up having a rank 4 in his graveyard if he if his combo goes through, um, he could summon a Cyber Dragon Infinity at some point with the um, the one rank up spell, which allows him to pay half his life points and then rank one card up, I believe one or two ranks or something along or something along those lines. So um, he's thinking out his plays here. But yeah, Raid Raptors are very interesting. Um, they're not a bad deck by any means. They can do a lot of crazy stuff if uninterrupted. Um, and, you know, I wasn't really, uh, you know, accounting for that. So he forgot to set the rank up. It is mandatory, I believe. So he sets the um, Soul Shave Force. So then he is allowed to spe uh, special summon the Raider's Wing by detaching a material from a Dark Xyz monster, I believe. Um, if I'm not mistaken, it could just be any Xyz monster, but... Um, then he activates um, the uh, Wing Requital, I believe it's called. I'm not exactly sure. I know it came out of uh, one of them, one of the more recent sets. And there's a lot of really interesting uh, things that he does with this deck, by the way. So he Link summons, and he makes the Rusty Rusty Bardish, which as I was saying, um, the Phantom Knights and the Raid Raptors work in tandem, which is really nice. So he sends the uh, the uh, Ancient Cloak off of the Rusty to set a Fog Blade, banishes the um, the Cloak to add the Boots, or to, rather to add the uh, the Shade Brigandine. So that's really strong, actually, even even without the other cards. So he activates the Soul Shade, uh, the Soul Shade Force. Um, pays half his life points, specials back the um, the four Strix, and then overlays Cyber Dragon Infinity right on top of it, which ensures that he has another negate on top of the Fog Blade. Um, Soul Shade Force is generally just a really, really nutty card. Just being able to immediately take back a four Strix, which um, in the turn you know, earlier on in the turn would have gotten you a search. Um, it's a lot of advantage to accrue very, very quickly. So now he has the Cyber Dragon Infinity with one material. However, he is at half of his life points, which um, in this scenario isn't really too bad. 
He special summons the Strangle Anius. And then from there, he can special summon uh, another card from his hand. Can't entirely tell what that card is. Although I'm sure I'll get roasted in the comments for not knowing exactly what that card is, even though I'm the one who played against him. Um, so he summons another four Strix. Looking at a lot of his options here, here's the thing about this deck, is he has a lot of avenues of play, a lot of lines that he could go down. Um, there, you know, He ends on a lot of similar boards, but there's a lot of different ways to get to those boards. So it's very... Um, you know, time consuming to sit there and watch him play Raid Raptors and just summon a bunch of birds. But, uh, it's the way Yu Gi Oh goes. So, uh, he's looking at his extra deck, and we'll see what he summons at this point. A lot of Xyz monsters in that extra deck. <laughs> So then he activates Quick Launch, which is an interesting uh, line of play. He uh, probably just to get the Dark Extender. So he summons the uh, Rocket Tracer, uh, basically one of the best Dragon cards in the game at the moment because it's a quick effect to pop something on the field and special summon another Rocket straight from the deck. It's pretty ridiculous. He is playing the Dragon. Yep, he is playing the Dragon Engine. So he uses the Striker Dragon to get a search for a Boot Sector launch. Uh, which is a ridiculous field spell card that allows you to um, re, uh, recur uh, some of your dragon stuff, some of your rockets. So he uh, uses the he uses the rocket link monster's effect and adds back the rocket tracer to his hand. And then he uses the field spell to special summon the rocket tracer back. Then he su he um, uses the rocket tracer to destroy the boot sector launch to special summon the uh, the other rocket monster he plays. I believe it's rocket tracker, if I'm not mistaken. Um, lots of plays. So then he overlays the two rockets and he makes the Raiders Knight. Summons out the Arc Rebellion, which is a very interesting card to summon considering this is turn one. From there, uh, it's my turn. So I drew, and then I normal summon the Neptibus. So he activates the Fog Blade, targets the Neptibus. I still can pay cost, though the Neptibus is negated. So I attempt to pay the cost. And then uh, Connor <laughs> immediately activates the Cyber Dragon Infinity, thinking that the Dragoons immediately will resolve, but uh, he's not realizing that I'm still activating Neptibus. And from here, I believe that's game. So uh, we move on to game two. It was a very, very quick game. Uh, Connor basically just set up a board here. Uh, and I just could not break it. He negate. He had the negate for uh, both my Neptibus and the Dragoons, which is essentially a, a death sentence for Mermelo. We are siding for game two, I believe. Um, at least at this point, I was siding three Forbidden Chalice, three Dimensional Barriers. I'm still siding the Dimensional Barriers, but I took the Chalices out. Um, I figure that right now, disrupting your opponent's turn is pretty good. And though Impermanence is not really the best card at the moment, it's still, um, you know, at least in, in the sense that it disrupts your opponent's turn slightly better than Chalice. Um, though Chalice is still really good for uh, playing into bigger boards. You can just um, attempt, you know, you can bait things or you can negate the Appalosa outright. Um, it just kind of depends upon the application of each of the cards. Or whatever. And so I'm going first, and I normal summon the infantry, and then normal summon the uh, dragoons. And this is why the um, fusion engine, I don't really care for it, because here I could have drawn a swap frog, 
and ditched and done other things, but instead I do this. So I special summon the Mermail Abyss Alatia um, off of this, and then I set two cards. But now it's his turn, and he normal summons a Vanishing Lanius. He activates the Pain Lanius, which allows him to target the Vanishing Lanius, take 400 damage. So I use Alatia and Chain and search a Mermail monster after he activates the Pain Lanius, figuring I could probably get a Teus or a uh, Pike. So I add the Pike, so he, specially, he resolves the Pain Lanius. I should have actually, before he went in, um, I should have uh, activated the Dimensional Barrier, but I waited and I, I gave him the okay to uh, continue playing, figuring he was going to try and extend a little further. I mean, it is Raid Raptors after all, but uh, he makes the Raid Raptor, um, and then from there I activate the uh, Dimensional Barrier, figuring I could stop him here. So it's my turn and I go into draw phase, so now we're in turn two. I use the Fishborg Launcher effect because I have Waters in Grave. I special summon the uh, Launcher. Now I'm considering my line of play here because there's really not much I can do. So I normal summon the the uh, Minstrel and I link into the Coral Anemone. Thinking I could probably get the Minstrel back and use its effect to uh, excavate. But then he uh, Fog Blades the, min the uh, Coral Anemone which is not exactly the most fun thing ever. But uh, that's, that, you know, I mean, Phantom Knights, uh, pretty good. So he activates the four tricks in his turn. By the way, I activate the forbidden chalice. Uh, I don't. I don't want him getting the searches off because the moment he starts getting the searches and I allow it, he pretty much wins. But he activates the um, the rank up spell. So he summons the um, the Arc Rebellion using the rank up spell, which is really funny. So he detaches, gains all the attack points of the monsters on the field, and I believe he gains the 16 and the 25 from uh, the Coral Anemone. So he attacks the. Um, Abyssalatia, so I, I will take a, 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 a fuck ton of damage because in total I believe he gained 50, between 25 and 16 he gained f uh, 4100 attack points. Um, so I attempt effect of uh, Alatia. So I have to send for cost. I should have, I actually forgot I should have sent for cost, that was a misplay on my part. So I drew into the Lapis Dragon. Uh, yeah, so this game very clearly could have been very different had I sent for cost for the Alatia effect, because it does in fact send for cost. Um, when it's destroyed, you can uh, send one water monster from your deck to the graveyard, target one water monster, and special summon it in defense position to your side of the field. So I should have sent something, maybe a heavy infantry or a dragoons or something along those lines. Probably the dragoons in order to get the um, Neptibus so that I could uh, immediately overlay into the Bahamut Shark. That definitely would have been a smarter line of play had I uh, uh, not been slightly distracted. So he attacks over the Lapis Dragon in his battle phase, um, which leaves me with not much to go on. Again, had I sent for cost, I would have had another play, but 
he uh, detaches again and uh, activates the Soul Shave Force. So he pays another half. I activate the Call by the Grave and target the uh, the Force Strix, trying to keep it from being, uh, you know, used as an XC's material for Soul Shave Force. That's a monster, because he can't attack over my Coral Anemone because of Fog Blade. So I just keep passing turn. There's really not much to do here. So he normal summons a Vanishing Lanius. Uses a Vanishing to special summon another Vanishing. He flip summons his uh, boots. Links into a Rusty. Uses Rusty's effect to set the Shade Brigandine. Or rather, no, because he... Yeah, he sets the Fog Blade. Brand uh, banishes the uh, Cloak to add the Shade Brigandine. Banishes the Boots. To add another copy of the Rank Up spell. And uh, the, the amount of extension that this deck has is actually ridiculous. Um, it's very, very uh, strong. It's very interesting to watch this deck function. Um, he overlays. So he summons the Force Strix, pops the um, Coral Anemone, because Rusty's effect says that uh, he can pop something the moment a Dark Exceeds Monster special summon to his own it points to. So he pops the Coral Anemone, and there's really not much I can do about it. So now he's he uses the Force Strix to search the Singing Lanius, which is essentially a free winged beast. Uh, free, a free level 4 Dark Winged Beast body that he can just throw onto the field the moment he controls an Xyz monster. So he special summons it, links them both, goes into the Y Strix, and I call it game. Um, so that is uh, game 2. Um, I show on my sides, I sided the two chalices and the three dimensional barriers. Um, again, I did in fact misplay by not sending for cost for the Alatia, which was really dumb. Because <laughs> that's not an effect I normally miss. But, uh, you know, everybody has, uh, you know, everybody makes one mistake once in a while, even with their favorite deck. It is just the nature of the game. Um, I really appreciate the views you guys give us. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Obviously, I did make that uh, very fatal misplay, which led to uh, my downfall here. Um, but uh, we live and you learn. There's really not much you can do about it uh, now. Uh, we already filmed the match. I actually didn't even realize I, I misplayed until now, um, watching the footage back. Um, but that is this match, uh, you know, you didn't even really get to see the Ready Fusion Engine in this Mermail deck, um, so hopefully the next dual video I post that I, um, with Mermail, you do get to see the Ready Fusion Engine and kind of see, um, why I feel that that version is slightly underwhelming, slightly less viable than any other, uh, build of Mermail, because the Ready Fusion Engine just summons out a free level 4, which is all fine and dandy, and you know, it, it allows you to extend, but it doesn't give you any, um, you know, kind of powerful, impactful play besides overlaying into a Bahama Shark and creating a Toad, which you would generally be doing with Mermail. Anyway, it's just that it turbos it out a little bit faster. But um, as I said, let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. I really appreciate the views you guys give us. Uh, um, we will be doing dual videos uh, quite a bit. Um, there's just a lot of decks we want to play. I mean, I have Phantom Knights, I have Necros. There's so many decks to play. Um, but that is it. Eric here with Team Eccentric, and I'm signing out.